Hello everyone, my name is Beric. I'm one of the lead engineers and co-founders of the Redstone Development Foundation. Hello, I'm Blue Dragon Dow, another one of the founders and Redstone engineers in the Redstone Development Foundation. And today, we're going to go over some of the basics of Redstone. That's right. Let's start off with um, that odd red stuff that you always get when you mine a lot. Uh, this is redstone. It'll look different in your texture pack, but this is the essence of redstone. You can place it on the ground, and it will make connections. Now, this seems kind of pointless. What can you do with connections? Well, first you have to know how, it, how the connections actually work. Redstone will always join to adjacent redstone. If you don't have adjacent redstone, it'll just make a four-direction split until you do put redstone in it. However, this is also a bit of a problem, because if you put one in the middle, it connects to all sides. You can't stop them from connecting like that. Now, let's say that you want to actually do something with it. Well, you would need a power source. There are a couple different types of power sources. The first and probably the most basic is the torch. A torch always acts as a high volt out to use electronics. So you have this, and all of a sudden, any wires attached to it become powered. It can go down the side of blocks as well, and back up just by placing one near it. When you connect a torch to a redstone circuit, this power only travels a certain distance. And in this case, none, apparently. Uh, this is because I've placed the torch in a strange position. position. So if I put it here, it powers this line. But if you notice how it starts getting dimmer, eventually it will run out of juice at the 16th block out. Here are three more ways that you can create power in a redstone circuit. These are the button, which I'm standing on, the switch, and the pressure plate. Please note that there is a stone pressure plate as well as a wooden one. Uh, the differences are minor, but they can be important because wood pressure plates are the only ones that respond to somebody's weight on them. Stone ones require a much heavier weight than the player character. So what happens is, um, let's take the pressure plate for the starter. If you step on it, it creates a high redstone signal. That's all it does. When you step off again, it turns off. The switch, however, is permanently on or off depending on how you set it. Simply flip it, and the redstone behind it comes on. Now, some people wonder why you have this here on a block instead of on the ground, which is just as valid. It's because when you apply power to a block like this, it acts as part of the redstone circuit and allows you to transmit through the block. This block is now considered a powered block in terms of redstone. Now, this is all well and good, but the button, this is probably one of the more useful ones, oddly enough, because if you push it, it's only on for a short period of time, which can be used in making a doorbells, different switches, etc. One of the big things that people who start out with Minecraft come up with in redstone is that, um, well, maybe a practical demonstration. Let's say that you have this redstone line and you want to connect it to a torch on this block that whenever you turn power onto this redstone line, the torch will turn off. And you place it and it winds up powering it instead. Hmm. So no matter what you do over here, if I switch on here, it changes nothing. That's rather bad. There are two ways around it, if you move over to this next one. The first is to place it on top of another block. This is because power never propagates downwards like this. You actually have to have a connection coming down from another block adjacent to it. So if we power this, if I can put a switch here, and we flip it, oh look turns off. Now, if you have a vertical constraint problem, you can put it on the end, over, like over here. So now, if you flip it, it does turn off as well. Well, here we have another setup. We have a rather long line, and the power doesn't reach all the way to our wanted target, which is, in this case, a note block. Um, this is just a simple note block playing... Excuse me. I just glitched the note C, if I counted up correctly. This is just to give an idea of when it actually connects. Now, there's all this stuff to cover. So, 
we have to figure out how to extend the power from here over there. Well, what we can do is build what is called an inverter. We remove two chunks, we place one block, and then we place a torch on the end of it. Excuse me, I should place this one block in the other direction. So I will do it this way. And now this block is turned on. Now the, the reason that this happens is this little combination of torch and block causes whatever signal goes into it to be taken out again, inverted. So if it goes unpowered, it comes out unpowered. And if it goes out un goes in unpowered, it comes out powered. Now, this requires a space of one, two, three, four, five blocks in order to get power another 15 in technical numbers. But this can be done in a much simpler way using in the code is called a diode, but it's known as a redstone repeater. It is a simple little thing that you can pick up by crafting with a few pieces of wood, two sticks, and two redstone torches. You simply place it right around here, and it lights up. And if I connect the circuit, it restarts the 15 count and allows the power to propagate all the way down and to your target. And you can chain as many of these together as you need. What's great about them is that they don't invert the state of the wire, so you don't have to worry about making sure that you always have an even number of inverters. Well, here we have an example of an OR redstone logic gate. Now, a logic gate is simply a structure that, when given an input in either true or false, which is either a high signal or no signal, it will produce some output based on a rule. Uh, in this case, it is OR, so if either or both of the inputs are on, the output is on. And in this case, we have it wired up to a, a note block so you can hear it. There's an odd convention in Minecraft where the switches, if they are up, they're considered off. So let's see what happens when we turn one on. We have a sexy tone. If we turn it off again, well, the output turns off. We turn the other one on again. If we turn both of them on, doesn't do jack, because an OR gate doesn't care if both are on as long as one of them is on. Now if we move along, we have a different one here. This one actually has some structure to it. This is an AND gate. Now the only time that an AND gate turns on is if both of its inputs are themselves on. So I can come over here to the switches and turn one on, and nothing happens. I turn the other one on, and nothing happens either. But if both are on, you get a nice tone. Next up is the NAND gate. There's another one of those weird things in science where people will put an N in front of it if it's an inverted output. So this basically acts exactly inverted of the AND gate. It will only turn on if both of its inputs are not on. In this case, no, neither of them are on. So if we turn this on, the output is still high. We turn both on, oh, then the output turns off. Now, if we go back to a true state, we get a tone. Moving along, we have a NOR gate. Remember that convention I told you about? This is the opposite of an OR gate. So, if either of the inputs turn on, the whole thing turns off. So, turn that on. Nothing. There's nothing there. And then it turns back on again. It's the tone. Same for the other switch. Now, these are all pretty simple. How's something a little bit more on the lines of, oh my crap, what is that? This is known as an exclusive OR gate. Now, what's interesting with the exclusive OR gate is that it only turns on when the inputs are different. So, right now, they are both low. But if I turn one high, we get a tone. Turn the other one high, we get a tone. But if they are equal, such as both on or both off, then you don't get anything. Over here, we have the exact opposite. A, this is called an exclusive NOR gate. Now, what this means is the output only turns on when the inputs are equal. So, right now, they're both set to off, and you can see that the output is on. So, if I turn one of these two on, the output goes away. If I turn both of them on, you get a tone. One off, both off. 
And now we come to probably the most complex gate in the world, the inverter. If the input is on, the output is off. If the input is off, the output is on. I send a signal in, it stops putting one out. Boom. And those are your basic logic gates. Here we have one of the more useful circuits, at least on its own. This is called a clock. Now, what a clock does is it basically turns itself on and off in a regular pattern. This specifically is a five clock, which means that for every second, it's on for half and off for half, since a tick is considered one-tenth of a second in Minecraft parlance, and this has a period of five ticks, hence the name five clock. Now, I have it turned off because it's broken right here, but there's an odd number of these redstone repeaters all hooked up in a loop. And what happens is it'll basically cause a on and off juggling to go around the entire loop. So when I connect it, it causes this different, this uh, on and off signal to go to our handy dandy note block. Now this is how it used to be done. Nowadays we have the actual repeater tool. So we can simplify that down to this, which is one power block and then a repeater feeding it back into itself. Now one of the things you have to be careful of is that you don't have it go on and off too fast, because what can happen is the torches can actually burn out. Right here I'm standing on what's called a latch. Now basically what a latch is, is it's something that keeps its state once you send something into it. In this case there are two inputs, this one over here and then this other one over here, and two outputs. Now for convention's sake we're going to call this one in, this one reset, and this output. This will be inverted output for you techno nerds. Now what happens is, let's say I want to push something in. I will set it. Nothing happened. That's strange. Because it's already set. Right. So if I push reset, oh, it popped back around. The output is now high. So if I want to turn it off again, bam, turns off. Now this is a decent latch. It's not that hard to comprehend, but there is a smaller version. This one. Uh, mind that you have to have redstone on top of the blocks in this one, and on that one you don't. Thank you, Barrick, for pointing that out earlier. So if I push this, it turns on over here and off over there. If I push this, it switches again. Now, one of the things that you can sometimes find is that people will want to have a push button actually stay on longer than a push button normally does. This is useful for things like uh, controlling doors, having a doorbell ring a certain number of times, even things like dispenser traps. So what I've rigged up here is called a monostable circuit. Basically what happens is when you input, in this case using this button, it travels into this latch. Now the reset line of the latch is wired up to the output. So what happens is whenever it turns on, it goes through this chain of repeaters, which is set to maximum delay, and then feeds back into the reset side. So if I set it, it stays on for longer than the button normally does. Then it gets straight out, and basically all you have to do is add a bunch of these in a line, and you can increase the delay up to 3, 4, 5, even up to upwards of 10 seconds, into minutes. I've seen somebody do it once that if you push the button, it held it open for 15 minutes. I don't know why they did it, but they did. That's it for the first of our tutorials in Redstone. Uh, I've been Blue Dragon Dow, and I and think I will be for quite a while. <laughs> and I have been the cameraman, Barrick. Uh, thank you for watching, and uh, look forward to a couple more videos that we'll be releasing soon. Yep. Happy Redstoning. <laughs>